Ladies and gentlemen, hello from London. I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting me to give this talk on what to do in primary angle closure glaucoma when lens extraction is not enough. I work with a number of companies and these are my financial disclosures. There are really two scenarios to consider here. The first is obviously the patient has had cataract surgery is still an angle closure and the pressure is still high. But it's also worth considering the patient who's about to have angle closure and has very advanced glaucoma and you know that cataract surgery is, is not going to be enough by itself and what to do then. In this scenario, the first scenario, which is really the main title of the talk, you treat the patient the same manner as anyone else with angle closure glaucoma. The second scenario is more difficult and I'll go on to explain why. In patients with chronic angle closure glaucoma who have had cataract surgery, the treatment obviously, like primary open angle glaucoma, will depend on other factors. The extent of visual field loss, the elevation of the IOP, but specifically in angle closure you need to consider axial length as well because there is a risk of aqueous misdirection which is not such a consideration in primary open angle glaucoma. Obviously, in someone with advanced glaucoma who's still in angle closure, you might consider trabeculectomy. If you're concerned about the risk of trabeculectomy failure, you might actually consider a tube. If they have less advanced glaucoma, you might consider a MIGS, subconjunctival MIGS, or a canal procedure. You do have to be a little careful with MIGS and angle closure because canal surgery is not quite as straightforward as an open angle glaucoma. We're all very familiar now with the various types of uh, new procedures available and with the canal procedures there are many it's a quite a crowded space there are stenting procedures cutting procedures the stenting procedures are quite elegant minimally invasive and because of the fda we do have randomized clinical trial efficacy data this is not so true of the cutting procedures which tend to be a little more crude uh, a little more invasive uh, do a similar thing but can be much cheaper in so some circumstances such as GAT uh, and this may be an issue if uh, cost is a big consideration. But in general they have not been through the FDA uh, randomized clinical trial efficacy um, barrier. And there is uh, ab internal canaloplasty which is a dilating procedure and again we don't have hard RCT efficacy evidence. This is the hydrus, which uh, seems from the data to be a little more effective than the other stents. But just to illustrate that hydrus at 12 months in this randomized cl clinical trial increases percentage of patients getting a 20% pressure drop from 70% for FACO alone to 86% for uh, uh, hydrus. And at 24 months, the numbers are slightly less but that was open angle glaucoma. And it is tempting to do angle surgery and angle closure as well, but of course, angle surgery is more difficult and angle surgery is less effective in eyes with extensive anterior sneakii. The anterior sneakii are a major risk factor for angle surgery failure. In eyes with advanced glaucoma, angle surgery, even if successful, is unlikely to produce low enough IOP to prevent progression. So in the patient who has had cataract surgery and is still an angle closure, canal surgery is controversial. Cutting procedures are very unlikely to function well with significant PAS. There's a higher risk of occlusion of stents in angle closure unless the angle is really widely open after the cataract. And angle closure glaucoma is often quite severe and this type of surgery may just not be effective enough. And this is an important consideration. Remember that patients with a very advanced glaucoma require a low target IOP because the risk to vision is high should progression occur. In the AGES study 22 years ago, it was shown that eyes with pressures of less than 18 didn't progress in eight years. However, this does not give the true picture because those that didn't progress, the mean IOP was 12 and at 12, the risk of progression was 13%. In the mid teens, it was about 30% and at 20 millis of mercury, it was about 70%. So you really do need to get low target pressures in those with uh, advanced glaucoma.
So it's worth noting that trabeculectomy is still the most effective glaucoma procedure in our portfolio for eyes with no other failure risk factors. And that's still why, that's why a crude operation is still around after 50 years. But trabeculectomy in angle closure is risky. It's riskier than it is in open angle glaucoma. Why? Well, there is a risk of aqueous misdirection. So you do have to put more sutures in, avoid prolonged anterior chamber shallowing, and perhaps use atropine on the table. So what about the subconjunctival mig, such as the Zem implant on the left or the Preserflow microshunt on the right? Well, we only have randomized clinical trial data for the Preserflow. There isn't any randomized data for the Zen at present. And in the FDA study of Preserflow versus TRAB in open angle glaucoma, uh, the Pressure flow reduced the pressure at one year from 21 to 14, which is a quite an impressive pressure drop. But TRAB reduced it from 21 to 11. So in patients with advanced glaucoma, subconjunctival MIGs do produce a greater IOP lowering than canal procedures, but they are a bit less effective than trabeculectomy. And all external filtration procedures seem to be less effective when combined with cataract surgery than when performed as standalone. And on top of that, external filtration, if, if you cannot control it, can result in aqueous misdirection. And these last two points are very important. Trabs are less effective when combined with cataract surgery. Subconjunctival MIGS also seems to be less effective when combined with cataract surgery. Even tubes seem to be less effective when combined with cataract surgery. And this was a study from Lausanne that, that showed that a combined barvelt phaco was actually a little less effective than, uh, than a barvelt al alone and the phaco performed separately. And an angle closure, if you want to put in a tube, there may be no space in the anterior chamber because of anterior sneak eye or a narrow angle. So you may need to sulcus fixate the tube. The whole glaucoma implant is a new tube with a smaller uh, diameter uh, externally at 467 microns and 127 internally that does offer um, the opportunity to put a tube in the anterior chamber uh, in eyes where there's less space. So that is one possibility. So an uncontrolled open angle glaucoma with cataract. I tend to perform trabeculectomy, external MIGs or tube first and remove the cataract six months later. But an angle closure, this is not an option. So which procedure should you combine with cataract surgery? Well, this will depend on the severity of the glaucoma. If a patient has had cataract surgery and is still an angle closure, Treat the patient the same way as anyone else with chronic angle closure. Canal procedures less likely to be successful. External filtration, there is a small risk of aqueous misdirection. Sulcus tube may, placement may be required to avoid PAS or to avoid the cornea. If the patient is about to have cataract surgery but has advanced glaucoma or extensive PAS and cataract surgery is unlikely to be enough, then You've got to consider the same as above, except beware that when you're combining cataract surgery with glaucoma surgery, everything is a little less effective. And thank you very much for your attention and for the kind invitation.